Hey everyone, today I'm going to be painting the wonderful Destiny. I'll add her Instagram handle in the description box below. For this painting, my main goal was just to have fun with it, play with the colors, and just not put any pressure on myself. To start off, I put down a layer of acrylic paint and then draw out the general shapes with oil paint diluted with mineral spirits. I usually start with a dark background because for me it feels more natural to build up from darker values up to the highlights rather than putting down shadows. Later you'll see how this allows me to cheat a little by not having to create darker shades of color for certain details. Next step is blocking in color. I try to put down a general sense of value here, but I paint over most of these shapes several times later on because I feel either they're not the right tone or value or I don't have the texture I want. But this first layer is a good foundation to start with. I usually mix more medium in this layer of paint to make sure it dries faster than the thicker layers of oil paint I'll be adding later on. In this case, I mixed in some more mineral spirits and some stand oil, and that's why you see the paint isn't quite opaque. Most of these colors that I'm blocking in are gonna be mid-tones. That way I can either add highlights or shadows without having to worry about covering up drastically different values. I really wanted to play with the golden hour lighting in this one, so instead of leaving her jacket sleeve and the building pure white, I made sure to really play it up with some warm yellows and oranges, and also added those warm tones to the greens in her outfit as well. This made the greens become more gray if you compare it to the other colors in the palette, but when combined with the rest of the painting, it would create the illusion that it was a very warm light. Leaving the clothes too green or too blue would ruin that illusion. At this point, I'm using more paint and less medium to get a thicker and more opaque stroke, and this way I can make the impression of the brick wall. First I put down a layer of short rectangular strokes and then I go over them with a lighter hand and blend them together so the general impression of the bricks are still there but I don't have to go through the painstaking task of making perfect lines and exact measurements. I'm too lazy for that. I realized the angle of the sidewalk was a little off so I'm fixing that here. The good thing about oil is that if you make a mistake, you can always paint over it. One thing about starting on a darker surface is that you have to layer quite a bit if you want to get a brighter painting. Sometimes I think it's really bright after a couple layers and then I add another round of highlights and realize that it's still really dark. But luckily I'm okay with lots of layers. Now time for the face. Let me warn you, I go over this so many times. After the first layer, I realized I probably should have gone a bit bigger with this painting because the face was so tiny and trying to get all of the details right was incredibly difficult. Every single brush stroke mattered. 
For the areas of the face in the light, I used a lot of cadmium red, Indian yellow, and titanium white, and a pinch of cerulean blue in the less bright areas. And for the shadows, I decided to go with some purple and blue shades with phthalo blue and a touch of brilliant pink. It was after this first layer that I realized I had somehow made the face too small, so brace yourselves for a creepy stage as I try to fix this. Layer number three on the jacket here, trying to get all of those values right and adding some pink tones to the darker areas. This hand was super hard. They're already hard when painting them big, and this one was half the size of my fingernail, so I waited a while before I tackled that again. I tried to add all of the shadows on the clothes at the same time so I wouldn't have to remix the shadow another time, but I'm pretty sure I went over it again later on as well. I had to move the shadow here because it was a little off from the first block in, but I really wanted the shadows to stand out, so I tried to make them pretty blue to contrast the warmer tones in the light and brightened up the pavement around it. I also decided I wanted the sky a tiny bit brighter too. The sky isn't usually one color, especially closer to the ground, so I made sure it had a bit of gradient to it. I thought the shadows underneath the overhang were a little dark, so I brightened those up too.
I thought the top of the building looked a little drab, so I added a more vibrant red to it. This pavement area, I painted over so many times. And now we're back to the face. After the first layer had dried, it was a bit easier to get those details in place because I didn't have to worry about accidentally scooping up a layer of paint and showing that background layer underneath, but it was still difficult. Apparently my camera got tired of watching me paint the face, so that's why that little jump in time is there. Sorry about that. I dab the face with a tiny mop brush here to smooth out the texture. This detail brush really saved me with this face. I also used a couple of mini liner brushes here and there to get into some more delicate areas. I'm using a stiff filbert brush with some oil paint diluted with mineral spirits here to get a speckled effect on the background. I really wanted that effect to be a part of the pavement at least because it is such a textured surface. And I might be a little lazy about it doing this way, but it worked out pretty well in the end, I think. I went in with more blue for the really intense shadows and then of course got sucked back into the face again. <laughs> I like using panels for my paintings instead of canvas because I don't have to worry about fighting with the texture of the threads, especially in those tiny details. However, with a panel, the paint can slide around a lot and that's why I use pretty soft brushes to lay down the paint and make sure they aren't going to scratch off lower layers in the process. Currently my favorite brushes to use are the Princeton Velvet Touch series. I decided to go in with a pink color around the edges of the figure to make it really glow. I 
I'm now adding the shadow of the street lamp. Since the cast shadow of the lamp is farther away from the building, it's going to look less defined and lighter than the cast shadow of the figure. I use a piece of paper towel to diffuse those edges and then add the darker parts of the shadow near the middle. These little lines took a lot of control and were a little wobbly, but I think they turned out okay in the end. Finally getting to this hand now. And it was a struggle to get all the tiny details right and make it look natural, but that wasn't really a surprise. The angle of this shadow seemed a little off, so I painted over it again. for the paint to be dry to the touch and then went over the top of the building with a really thin glaze of a kind of purpley blue in order to desaturate the color a little bit. I also used a red glaze to saturate the color of the curb area and add some depth. Next was the lines of the parking spots. I did not trust myself to put these in perfectly straight so I decided to use a ruler for this. But I didn't want it to be perfectly smooth because they're really textured in real life, so I left some spots open and used a small brush to add in that texture. Overall, I really loved making this painting. I love the weird textures and interesting effects of all the layers and seeing it all come together in the end. All the choices I made, be they great or not so great, all created a story behind it all and made the painting all the more interesting. In my eyes, anyway. My goal was to have fun, and I did. After a few weeks, when the painting is dry to the touch, I can go in with a retouching varnish and really make those colors pop. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this process as much as I did.